Welcome along guys, welcome back to the garage. Today, I'm actually, well, we're both getting our hands dirty. I'm joined with Dale from Race Talks, and what we're gonna be doing is fitting one of his thumb brake kits onto the SMCR. Now I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago in my sort of garage tour video. A thumb brake, something I've always wanted, especially on the SMCR where you're in sort of, you know, big off-road motocross boots, you lose all the feel from the rear brake. So we're gonna be fitting one of these, one of Dale's thumb brake kits. Dale, what, we, what we're gonna be doing exactly, what we're gonna be putting on it. The universal thumb brake system um, that we now fit to any bike. Yeah. Um, we're now in three BSB teams. Uh, wow. We've got TAS BMW, we've got uh, Moto Rapido yeah. uh, Oxford, and we've also got, uh, who are we with? FS3. FS3 as well. Um, we've now designed a new uh, thumb paddle as well, uh, which is a, a genuinely a BSB thumb paddle. Uh, specifically to suit the three bikes, yeah, uh, the three wow. teams. And uh, it's looking interesting, yeah. really interesting. So I think there's very few videos out there on how to actually set, install, set up, bleed, get it all working on a thumb brake. So if you're interested in a thumb brake for your road bike, your supermoto, any of your bikes basically, this video is gonna be very, very useful. So Chopsy, roll the intro. So before we get cracking, we're just going to have a run through and uh, if you could give us a quick run through of the parts, which are, you know, as part of the kit and what we need to think about, because there's a fair few, fair few bits here. Yeah. So we've got the junction valves. So these four, five junction valves um, are for the, so you can have in conjunction with your foot. If you don't have one of these, you can go directly to the caliper. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to do an MOT, it's always best to have the junction valve in uh, um, fitted. They prefer to see them, do they? With a thumb brake, not many people know what a thumb brake is or how they work or anything like that. So they're going to be very dubious about the situation of trying to do an MOT with uh, a thumb brake on its own. So, so that, that is the, the junction valves. And where do, they, where do they fit then? Do they fit into the... So these fit into cylinder? the original master cylinders like these. Okay. So these here, this one here is for the uh, bikes like the KTM Super Dukes, uh, your bike, um, similar version. Uh, you've got so many variations of these uh, master cylinders in general, so it's just working out which one goes where. Yeah, okay. um, but this is one very similar to the KTM Super Duke 1290 and the Ducati Panigale oh, okay. Sapphire. Yeah. Yeah. This plastic valve here, it spins around, it's got a donut that it sits into and it's compressed inside. If you pull that out, it will physically pull out and then you can put this one oh, here, okay. this one here. So right. this one here, you have the, uh, the O-ring, you slot that inside, you slot the junction valve inside of, and then the circlip goes over the neck and then sits into the groove and stops right. it from coming out. Gotcha. Uh, that's how a junction valve physically works. You can't do, and, and, and I, 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 I need to say this very clearly, you cannot do a double banjo from uh, the thumb brake to the rear caliper. It just doesn't work. Oh, the really? fluid will feed from the thumb brake. You're forcing the, um, the, the fluid through and it's gonna come out of the reservoir. That's it. And you're gonna get uh, brake fluid everywhere. Don't double banjo. Don't double banjo. You need one of these kitties. Various types. You got ones that are, this one's a very common one for the CBR 1000s and the CBR 6s supply, most of the Honda. Um, you got this one here, which is very common for the Sierra 450s and the oldest generation of KTMs. Uh, you got this one, oh, and even like the old V4s and RSV4s. Okay. This one here is most commonly for the WR and the YZ uh, 450s, 250s uh, sort of bikes. Uh, this one here and this one here are the most common uh, nowadays. Uh, this one's for things like your bike. Uh, these are titanium. Uh, units, but they've also got a very thin neck, hence why they have to be titanium for the oh, strength. I if I didn't have them in titanium, they'd just, the they'd just snap. And then of course you've got the actual thumb brake <laughs> yes. unit itself. Okay, so the thumb brake, um, it's taken me four years to design it. I am the designer as well. And I've, it, it's taken me a long time. Uh, I needed to make sure that this was just beautiful and perfect. Um, so. The trick is with this unit, if I show you how it goes together. So that mounts over there. You put that through there, put the little pinch bolt in the back. So you've got a large amount of adjustment back and forth. You've got a large amount of adjustment up and down. 
Yeah. And then you've also got the thumb throttle, uh, the thumb lever as well, Isn't paddle that? as well. So you've got a lot of adjustment in and out as well. So that, what's that made of? That's billet, billet so aluminium. So this here is billet aluminium, all of the black stuff, black sections. The silver sections are all titanium. And if you look closely, they are all lock wired, lock wired capable. Yeah. So shall we uh, get started and Ooh. get fitting? I've got new tools to uh, play with as well. Ooh, sexual. Yeah, let's get the master mounted first, the, the juncture of having to the master first. Yeah. Um, because being a new, um, one of the unique versions, it's good to yeah, so that, get that, that one done. That's the standard, standard master on the SMCR. So and we'll this one's for the, over. yeah, this is the RTX 479. Well, that's the actual. Uh, that's the SKU, that's the part number. Ah, okay. So first off, I guess whip that off then. That's what we're going to do. All right, so that there was the original plunger. So that's in there, so don't worry about that. Uh, that's okay, yeah. where it goes into. Uh, we need to go for this piece here, remove that. Because this will go away now, you won't need this. Well, don't have to be a reservoir at all. Oh, really? Reservoir goes away. So yeah, unfortunately your little shiny bit's gonna disappear. Let's get that on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> where this junction valve goes, yeah. it, um, you have a braided line that goes from that point all the way up to your thumb brake now. Ah, okay. Which means all of this is now redundant. Banjo removed. Now we need a pair of pliers. Which draws that? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, keep going down. This is the. No. There we go. Ah. Right. So we want to long those pliers. So from this point here, we need to get this yeah. uh, plastic nipple out. Yeah. So the trick is grab hold of it and twist it until it pops out very carefully because it's going to spit. Yeah. There we go. Shut your eyes. Safety goggles. Okay, so now that is redundant. Yeah. And this piece here, we need so to carefully... The moment, just to this is just the, uh... a rubber, I call it a donut. Okay. So that also doesn't need to be needed anymore. And that is very dirty. Yeah, for some reason, these lines get really dirty. You can keep changing it and... Can we swear? Yeah, we can swear, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's like, it's like, oh my God. It's physically, Jesus. I don't know what happened. It, it, all, all the fluid that was in the cat, it always goes dirty after a while. Wow, I've never seen that before. Yeah, they always do it on these. Everyone's just the same. It's really weird. <coughs> I don't quite understand where the dirt comes from, you know? Oh Must just, maybe it's just, I don't know, I honestly don't know. Yeah, it looks like rust, like a mixture of rust and fluid. Yeah. It probably, it's more than likely not, but. No, I don't know if the old fluid gets overheated or somewhere, I don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the junction valve into, into this, this, which will allow us to keep the foot and the thumb brake in conjunction, so they can both be worked both at the same together. time. Yeah. Don't, the, the only thing is, when you're riding, you will use one or the other. If you start using the foot brake and you try and use the thumb, yeah. it won't work. Ah, oh, really? Okay. Because you've already passed the port. So when that's mounted and you push the piston past the thumb brake port, you. you're now bypassing it, which means there's no fluid being able to pass. Right, so, you, so nothing can happen. You're on the rear brake then. You you're only on the rear brake. Rear foot brake yeah. If you then release the foot brake, then you've got full access to the thumb brake again. Right, okay. I had a couple of uh, customers come to me um, with just a junction valve and bought somebody else's thumb brake. And what they've asked is, uh, why am I not getting a decent uh, feel in the thumb brake? They think it's the uh, junction valve. It's nothing to do with the junction valve, it's the thumb brake. Uh -huh. If it's mine, if it's somebody else's, always speak about the thumb brake. The junction valve is just a through port. That is all it's doing. There we go. Whee! Circlip. O-ring. And the titanium junction valve. Yeah. So now what we're doing, O-ring, inside here, push that down to the base. It will want to lift slightly. Need to get it to fit over the neck first, like that. We'll then feed that into there, push it in until it seats. There we go. Okay, all clear. 
click, little click, nice. Now we need a very small flathead uh, screwdriver. Okay, mate. Uh, third jaw down. Third jaw down. I'm guessing. Hey. No. Fourth jaw down. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> there we go. I'm slowly learning. Pliers. Jeez. Did I just say pliers? Circular pliers. pliers. Get it right. And this is a two-man job. Let's see how we can get on. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll see in a second. Oh no, I got it. All right. This is the trick. Pull it in and push it down. Same time. So what are you pulling in there? Are you pulling in the, the circlip and pushing down at the same time? Exactly. So the circlip sits below the lip that is in this uh, port. So it's not made for a circlip at the beginning. Yeah. I've, I've repurposed it. Yeah, okay. So now that is fixed in there. It can still turn, but it's fixed in there. So we've prepared the uh, rear master cylinder. Now we're going to move up to the handlebars and start thinking about routing wires and where we're going to mount the kit before we connect everything up and down at the master cylinder. Strip it. So we need to feed the, uh, the braided line through the system. So we've got to go from this point here. We've got to follow the other braided line down until we get to the headstock. Yeah. Feed under and um, between the headstock, under the tank, in this case, the seat in the airbox, <laughs> and then feed down to where the where rear caliper, uh, yeah. rear uh, junction valve will be. When you're running the Wattweiler airbox, you get all this space. When you remove the standard airbox, you get all this space in here. So we can actually remove and, and remove the cables without needing to uh, take any panels off. Supermotos, uh, we've only just got into supermotos. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm missing a the bolt there. <laughs> <laughs> There's some work to do on this bike, as I said. And with a thumb brake, you have to reverse bleed. You do, yeah. You yeah, can't yeah. just do a standard bleed because the thing is, what you imagine, all of that yeah. is air. Yeah. Right the second, yeah. that is all air. Yeah. So if you feed that from the thumb brake here all the way down to here, yeah. and you're trying to push all of that fluid and um, all of that air out yeah. down the bottom, no, no, no. So the trick is, we're starting to, we are hopefully, hopefully going to start selling these. So this here is a simple tube. Yeah. Uh, like a, an airline tube. Yeah. I've then heated this end up a little bit. And then what I've done is I've got these uh, syringes yeah. and it's got a screw in it. So it's actually allowed me to screw it in and lock it in. Oh, well it's actually really clever. Well, before you take that away, I'm gonna have to go to the front brake with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing is the thumb brake, uh, the front brake shouldn't need a uh, back bleed. Yeah. The thumb brake, we'll, we'll go over it, make yeah, sure, but you, there's you, no reason to have to do a back bleed on the front brake. Yeah. Only on the thumb brake. Yeah, okay. Or a, or a uh, handbrake, scooter brake, scooter however brake. You're, wherever you are in the world. Yeah. Um, handbrake is for Americans, scooter brake is for us. I don't know why we call it scooter brake though. We use the Venhill braided lines. Uh, yeah. yeah, braided lines. Um, I find these are perfect for this situation because you can literally feed um, the choose a different type of uh, connectors. Yeah. Uh, the banjo connector on the ends uh, means you've just got a, a line to start with. It's, yeah. it's such a nicer finish yeah. uh, this way. So this is how we always um, provide them. And we sell these on the website as well. And uh, we've got five, we've got about six generic sort of sizes okay. that we use yeah. for uh, adventure bikes, supermoto slash motocross because same bike. And uh, what do we do? Uh, race bikes and uh, sports bikes. Yeah. So we have generic sizes and we always do them in black with black banjo yeah, fittings. Yeah, nice. Right, okay, well that's... We... Unplug it. I might as well, yeah, I might as well swap my headlight on there. Oh dear, it's mucky in there. I have to get the, the rags out. Don't look at my dirty bits. <laughs> Feed the cable around the back without scratching anything. There we go, brilliant. There's one more in there. There we go, excellent. Okay. So that's the cable. We want to feed this through here underneath. So it sits down here. peek a -boo. I've got it. That's what you want. There we go. We've routed the cable from the bars through the cow, through the cow here, and then back down out of the cow here. Right, we need to make sure that we're clear of the shock as well. Right, from this point here, we're gonna mount both the, nice, both the lines back onto the master cylinder and bolt it back in. Yeah. Each bike, is gonna probably have a different adapter. So this is the banjo adapter from Van Hill. This goes onto the end of the line. Ah, uh, okay. And that gives you the orientation of whichever you need. Yeah. So now we're gonna mount the actual thumb brake unit 
to the handlebars, I guess, Dale, yeah? Next job. So you've got the map buttons here. I'm going to move that over, play around with the brake lever mountings and see where the thumb brake's going to sit. So on this point here, we need to try and get the right orientation of where, right location of where we want to mount it. Yeah. The further away it is, the better it is because you get the better fulcrum. Um, the closer it is, the harder it's going to be to push. Right. So the further out, the better. Um, the leverage sort of thing on the, the, yeah. Exactly. But it all depends on how much room we've got because at the moment on this point here, there is a very limited amount of room. Feed the clamp up and through and down. So from this point here, we need to make sure that where it grabs is in a good, lot, uh, good spot. Yeah. So at the moment, that is pretty much where it's gonna to wanna to go. About there. So when it goes all the way in, still clear from the cluster. Do you realize the problem here though? Well, I'm going to want these on all my bikes now. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to cost me a fortune. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, I can only use a thumb brake. I'll be on launches going, no, has it got a thumb brake now? I, I can't ride it. <laughs> I can only ride bikes with thumb brakes. So you've got this little pinch bolt here, and then you've got the main bolt on the outside. The little pinch bolt is on the inside, and once it's tightened up, that's it. It's out of the way and it's done. Okay. And that just holds the angle of the lever in, in your position? It just holds the, uh, the, the perch arm to yeah. the actual bracket and it can't yeah. move. Okay. So with that one and this one on the other side locking together, it's taken all that pivot out. The way the thumb brake is now orientated, it's facing slightly down. So when you're standing on the bike or if you're sitting um, with your up in a wheelie, yeah. um, you've got more, an, uh, more of an angle to be able to grab the thumb because yeah, your yeah. hand is going to be further up. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. uh, your hand is going to be further up. So this is a really good position for the thumb brake to sit yeah. and it still has full clearance of the, the cluster. Mass cylinder goes in, plunger in first, mass cylinder on top. So the bolts will come straight through to the bottom. Yeah. Which will then allow the protection of the plate underneath right, okay, for nice. motocross and supermotors. A little bash plate on the bottom to protect it. One thing to be fully aware of is at the moment there is a slight bit of play there, which means the piston inside the mass cylinder isn't pushing past the reservoir port. Right. If you've got it in, one, two or three clicks in, there's no play there whatsoever, which means now the piston is bypassing the reservoir port, which means you can't bleed it. Right. There will be no bleeding involved. Uh, it, it just won't work. Make sure there is always a little bit of play. It doesn't matter how much play you've got, it just needs a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's otherwise it would be. Also, if you want this further in or further out at the moment, that's maxed out, so you've got full control there. If you don't, if you feel that's too far out, just bring it in. Uh, okay. It's not further in. Yeah. Okay. With the fluid at the moment, there is a little bit at the bottom in the back, um, in the rear caliper. Yeah. Um, but from that point uh, to from the master cylinder up, the the that's foot it. master cylinder up is empty. So what we're going to do is before we do anything here, we're going to force a load of fluid from the syringe through the rear caliper. As soon as you've undone the bleed nipple it's just gonna be fully open, which yeah. means you can just force the fluid up and this will start filling up. Yeah. And then we'll stop there and then do a back bleed. Let's we'll see you get on, because I've had massive problems trying to reverse bleed the front brake on here. Yeah. Because of the ABS pumpy thing. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how we get on, because we'll be, still be going through that, won't we, from the rear caliper, so this will be interesting. Welcome back. I say welcome back because it's actually four weeks after we started doing this. We've run into a tiny issue because this is a development bike. This is the first one Dale's fitted to the 690 um, and this is a development. We've run into a slight problem with the placement of the rear master cylinder. So have a look at this. So on the 690 and the Husqvarna 701s and the Gas Gas, the rear master is mounted onto the rear foot. A bit of a sort of a unique design really and when we add the uh, junction, valve. junction valve to the bottom of this it actually pushes it towards the so if you can see in there just fouls on the linkage yeah it pushes it towards the linkage there's not enough room for the junction valve in between where the linkage goes so we needed a slightly different solution for mounting the rear master cylinder so what we've come up with or we i say we that's the royal we <laughs> what dale's come up with is a little bracket which then fixes to the top of the uh, rear foot peg and it moves it rotates the whole assembly the whole master cylinder assembly 
and the junction valve sticks out at the bottom of the bike now. So basically we've, we've rotated it 180 degrees, is yep. it? Yeah, we've rotated it 100. No, no, 90, no, 90. 90 degrees. Rotated it 90 degrees, moved that down so we've got room for the linkage. So yeah, this is why this video video has been a little bit delayed. Everyone's asking me, when's that video out? When's the video out? It's because a bit of re-engineering was required. There we go, bracket fitted, the orientation changed. Obviously, the, with the Supermotos, of course, this, this isn't an off-road bike. Obviously, if, on the Enduro version, that is quite low to the sump guard. You know, so if you're going off-road, you could potentially catch that, um, rip it off potentially. But of course, this is for the Supermoto, not too worried about that. Um, ideally, what we want to do in the future, what Dale wants to do in the future, I must stop saying we, Dale. I'm not part of race dogs. I'm getting carried away here. But ideally, you're also developing an actual different master cylinder as well, aren't you? Yeah, so we've got the master cylinder over there we can look at. So this is your own design, is it? Completely. That's our own yep. special. That is indeed. That's, that's rather sexy. And that's classed as the dual port master cylinder. So that's it fitted on the bracket. So we just got to bleed the system, get it all up and running, and then I guess a little little test up the road, see how it works. <laughs> <He's> screaming. <laughs> There's always going to be a little bit of fluid, um, a little bit of air between this point course, yeah. and inside here. That's why when you do the back bleed, uh, the normal bleed, that clears that. Ooh, that clears that up. Because you've got uh, this is going to the ABS pump, isn't it? And then back. It's feeding all around. Yeah. yeah so it's always. A Backside. But the thing is, from this point to the ABS and down, it's still got fluid in it. Hey! hey bloody hell, only bloody And there works. she is. Ooh, easy. <laughs> <sighs> My bug. That takes some dirt. <sighs> Alright, now clean up. <laughs> There's the clean up team. So it's not, is it normally as tight as that or is that? Uh, that's tough? tighter than normal. Yeah, because uh, when I've done the front, it's always been, it just it, yeah, it just pops off the syringe and stuff and it's yeah. so, so much pressure. It's a lot harder, that, that was a lot harder than my KTM. Was it? And your my T7. Duke. Your Super Duke. Yeah, Super Duke 1290 and the uh, Tenere 700 yeah. World Raid. These bikes seem to be notoriously hard to, <laughs> to, to bleed. Ready? Open. Close. Open, close, open, close. So there we go, Dale, all done, thumb brake. Oh, I can't wait to get out and test that. So I will be following up with the video, full test of the thumb brake on the road. Um, we bet it took a little bit of bleeding, doesn't it? We'd use Dale's oh, reverse bleeding trick yeah. to, just to get any remaining stuff out, but, uh, but it's feeling lovely now. And uh, I really cannot wait to test that. And when Dale's got your new final finished version of the master cylinder, perhaps I can give one of those a try as well. Well, we're doing one for the top for the thumb brake and yeah. we're also doing one for the rear. One, two different types. Ah, uh, okay. Two different types. One for the pedal, one for the... the yeah, so with brake. the pedal, um, you got, it, it's a one port in, one port out. Right. With the thumb brakes, there are two port in, one port out. Uh, so okay. two different types. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you actually look at uh, a 30 more master cylinder, Brembo master cylinder, um, uh, you need to know what you're looking at. Right. Okay. Um, two different types, and yeah. they're a pain. They're a, <laughs> such a pain. Nothing's ever easy. No. So if you're interested in a thumb brake kit or any other products which Dale does, he does all sorts of really good kit for your bike. We put links below to his website. Go check him out. And any questions, I guess, just fire him. Have you got like a contact form on there or email? Just it's a contact to, form. Yeah. Um, I assume a lot of people are going to be putting it on your post anyway. Yeah. Uh, on your video, yeah. so I can just keep an eye on that yeah. and obviously reply as yeah. and when as well. Sounds good. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Massive thanks to you, Dale, for coming down and helping us out with it. Really no appreciate problem at all. it. Thank so you. If you like the video, leave a like. Don't forget to check out Dale's website, Race Talks, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers. I know. <laughs> Bit of growth since the last time, is that? <laughs> the continuity of this video is terrible.